She was asked to remove numbers which have an even number of divisors from the set of integers from 1 to 150. If she performs this task correctly, what are the numbers that remain after she completes this job? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. It does this correctly. Let's think about this. Write down numbers. 1 has only one factor. So 1 will remain. 2 has two factors. 1 and 2. 3 has two factors. 1 and 3. 4. 1 into 4. And then 2 into 2. That's three factors. 5. 1 into 5. Two factors. We cannot obviously write down everything and then cancel, and then figure out. Right? So we're going to be, be, be somewhat methodical about this. Right? First of all, we notice two, three, and five have two factors each. Why? One and two, one and three, one and five. Any prime number will have exactly two factors, one and itself. One will have exactly one factor. So all prime numbers will disappear. It was asked to remove. All prime numbers will disappear. One will remain, and right? one remains. Four also remains because it has one, four, and two. But now we are saying prime numbers will not feature on this list. So I'm not going to even bother writing down prime number. Every prime number has two factors. Done. So let's think about composite numbers. Let's think about six. Six is one into six, two into three. And seven. I don't want to write eight. One into eight, two into four. And deliberately writing these numbers, the factors in pairs. 1 into 8, 2 into 4. Suppose you're thinking about say 12. 12 would be 1 into 12, 3 into 4, 2 into 6. Six factors. Whenever you're writing factors, you get one, you get the other. You take a number like say 72. You divide by 8. The quotient is 9. If this is a factor, this is also a factor. Every time 8 divides 72, you think about 8 dividing 72, you automatically know 9 also divides 72. So factors get gathered in pairs. Brilliant. So 12 has 6 factors. 72 has some number of factors. But every time you have one factor, you have another factor. Let it as 1 into 72, 2 into 36, 3 into 24. 4 into 18, 6 into 12, etc, etc, etc. You have one factor, you've got the other. Factors go in pairs. So, all numbers have an even number of factors. That's not happening. That's not happening. We already have one number that has an odd number of factors. 4, the factors are 1, 4 and 2. Why is there an odd number of factors? Because interestingly for 4, I'm going to go to the next slide. If you take 4, I divide this by 2. My divisor is 2. My quotient is also 2. Every time this happens, my number of factors will not be a multiple of 2. The two factors that are the same. And if you take 36, my divisor is 6, my quotient is 6. Or 36 can be written as 1 into 36, 2 into 18, 4 into 9. They are all in pairs. But 6 into 6 is the same factor repeating. When will the same factor repeat? What does it mean? What am I saying when I say divisor is same as quotient? Divisor is same as quotient or our number is a number like 4 or 36 or 49 or 100 or 121. All of them are perfect squares. Any perfect square will have an odd number of factor. Only a perfect square will have an odd number of factor. If a number has an odd number of factors, it has to be a perfect square. These are all slightly different statements. I want to sit and think, do they all mean the same? They may, they may not. So think about that. So if a number is a perfect square, it will have an odd number of factors or effectively when Shiv is removing all of this, he will have only perfect squares or he will have the numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc, etc, etc. What will be the last number he has in this is 10 square is 100, 11 square is 121, 12 square is 144. Till that he will have, he will have 12 numbers on this list from 1 square to 12 square, 13 square is 169. That is greater. You should know your squares, should be able to pick squares and patterns straight away very quickly. So keep that in mind. Lovely question is basically saying write down all numbers from 1 to 150 that are perfect squares. Lovely. Hush.